or on the computer. Hello, Jose. Thank you so much for joining me again for the second time, or first time this year anyway, um, to talk about your journey um, as a CEO of Citgo, what happened in the wake of November 2016, if I'm right. 2017, 2017. Oh, 2017. And um, and and yeah, and, and what followed from there. Um, your story, we've discussed it already on the podcast, which was a wonderful interview, which I'm still thankful for you to have done with me and feeling very, very honored with what you shared. But for our listeners, um, this is going to go on my page and you'll be free to share it. Also, I was thinking of putting it on um, YouTube so that that's easy to share everywhere. Um, you just wrote a book, a memoir called From Hero to Villain, um, which you're promoting at the moment. Um, that shares the story of you surviving five years of captivity in, in Venezuela um, as the CEO of a company and, and where you become, you and your colleagues, were, were there six of you? If I remember we were, right, yeah, we were six, and that's why we were our, our, our name that the press put up was the Sidgo Six, because okay. we worked with the Sidgo Petroleum, and we were six, so they they baptized us Sidgo Six. Okay, uh, and and um, well, it's it's a real tragedy the story um, of what happened to you and your colleagues. It must have been a tremendous shock, not just the shock on the day because it lasted for five years. Um, and um, I just want to go back to a couple of facts that I've gathered from the book. Uh, sadly, I haven't finished reading the book for this interview, but we're just going to go with the flow. And, and I'm sure you can share a lot of the information. But you are, you've, you, like the first 10 chapters of your book describe in a lot of detail the political and economic situation of the time, because it's very relevant to what happened, right? Correct. Um, yeah. It seemed that the company you worked for had this sort of holding company that was making decisions that weren't actually aligned with normal corporate decisions due to their link to the Venezuelan government. So you were almost like trying to act, or you were acting actually, I'm sorry, it's not yet you were trying. You were acting with the governance that, you know, uh, Western companies have or in the US or in Europe, but you were constantly under threat, threat from that holding company and, and the government that had their own agenda. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly the problem that we were facing because we we were here in a US-based company with following US law, and these guys in Venezuela, the crazy guys doing their own agenda, as you said. So for me, it was really a nightmare having to be facing that in the middle of the political tension that was going in that moment, I was going in, I took the presidents of that company, I believe that the worst moment of the story. And, yeah. and by the, the, the way, I don't say it there, but there is a chapter that they, at the end, they, this guy went so crazy that they take took a decision that today the company is, is almost lost. It's in a, in, in, there is a, a trial going on here in the U.S. because of that decision they they took, but we were that we were in that political nightmare trying to maintain that the company uh, uh, secure the integrity. Mm. But we had, you know, uh, uh, as U.S. lawyer know that we had this corporate holding on top of us that the decision were taken from the Venezuelan uh, guys, and that was our our challenge because we were keep trying to keep the company safe here at this level in the U.S. But on top of us, they were taking another decision. And that was the, the, the way that this case began. So that's why in my book, I had to describe it so that people understand. Because one of the things for me, for me was something important to tell the story this way. Because they, my book has like two, two, two blocks. The first block is how the single six case was created. All the political and economical implications. And the second part, is where begins that story that I have been talking about when we were capturing our five years of, of captivity, because this, this is another story where all mm. the political implication to take are released. So there's like two movies in, in, yeah. in, in, 
And one of the things that for me was important, Angie, is because when our case happened, our case was the most high politic case in Venezuela, I believe in many times, because when when the negotiation together released began directly with the US government in 2021, the first time that the, the ambassador of the final uh, rescue as ambassador Roger Castro uh, landed in Venezuela was the first time a US officer landed in the in the previous five years. So literally our case was well reopen the relationship between the two countries. So it was a very big thing, and it's going to be part of the story of Venezuela. Our case mm. is going to become part so of So you, you're part of history, well, uh, Jose, huh? are you? Yeah. And, 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 and let me tell you, and the, and the conclusion of our case is even worse, because, because at the end we were swapped by the two nephews of the president of Venezuela. So how can that be part of the story of Venezuela? We we mm. we our story is going to be written in the books of of the of the Venezuela story in in the years to come. It's going to be part of the the contemporary story of Venezuela. So maybe in other countries, not relevant, but in Venezuela, this is really relevant. But you know what happened? The, our case always was treated in the surface because the the press were talking six American Venezuelan guys that were captured as hostage, and then they were went deep diving in 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 in, in mm. the concept. And so, uh, and, I, and the case, and so that for me was relevant to tell the story. And the other mm -hmm. thing that we were always uh, named the Sidgo Six. Everybody always knew us as the Sidgo Six. So I wanted to put faces to to the people. So now yeah. the people by me. Now the people know that Jose Pereira was one of the Sidgo Six. That so mm -hmm. that's why I, I took my time to 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 publish my book because I wanted to first get my work out and, and and by the way one of the first podcasts i did was with you mm. and what you and was a wonderful podcast because i discovered all the spiritual side that we went through because at the end this is the second legacy that i, I want to put in my book is that we found that because the situation we went through and and when the six of us did it great because the six we did it great and we create uh, as I always say like a survivor plan that that we discovered a lot of inner forces that we didn't know that we had it mm. and and now the inner forces we discovered that we had all that connection with that with the spirituality in my case I'm a God believer so I discovered that 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 we had that connection and by the way today I'm very connected to my church that that was that, that my my consequence today in my life. Mm. I, I think that's a very moving story. Um, and I want to ask you more questions about that and your reconnection to the divine. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a specific religion or not, but I want to honor your roots and, and what you've done with this. Um, I, I'm also fascinated by two aspects that we've never discussed before. First, you were talking about history, and we all know that history is written by the victors or by each side. So in a way, it's good that you've put a peg in the ground from the person at the center of this story um, that is going to be probably manipulated by different people for political, um, I suppose, um, purposes. But here you tell it as it is. So that's, I think that's quite important. Um, go and ahead, you're, you're going to say something. Important. Angie, you're saying something very important right now. The reason why my book I published first in English and not in Spanish, because let me tell you, my first version was in Spanish, because mm. the letter I wrote in jail was in Spanish, not in English. So I had to translate it to English, and I decided to publish first in English. And you know why? Because Venezuela today is going to elections in one month. So I was thinking, if I publish my my book first in Spanish, it will it can get caught in the middle of the political uh, yeah. thing in Venezuela because I say things there that maybe can be manipulated or maybe can say, no, that's not true. Well, that's what happened because that's where, where I was there. And you know, I, I went to a, a situation, Angie, that for 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 reasons of God, I don't know how to say this here, but the only person that knew the story, the real story, was my my boss that died one year after and me. 
and he's mm. dead. So the person that, as I said in my in my in my in in Troy, so in my book, the only person that could confirm what I say in my book was him, and he's died. So that that's why I say my true story because this is my story. Mm. And I also I think it's particularly poignant for me um, in Europe. Um, so, you know, we're traveling all over the world here, which is kind of fun because we're having elections at the moment in the UK and in France as well. And you're saying there's elections in Venezuela. And um, for me, I'm, I've been reminded recently who, of how fragile democracy is and how we take democracy for granted in the West. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, I find that when you talk to people like you, Jose, who have had a firsthand experience of what um, a dictature or a, a, um, a political, um, I suppose, background that is not democratic, how it feels like, it's kind of sobering. And I'm hoping that it's also going to wake up people that they don't become complacent around um around the institutions of their own country, around the importance of voting, of being active citizens, because when you lose democracy, you lose much more than you think that you do. Today, yeah? Venezuela to a very interesting process because th this regime has 25 years. So mm. they, came, they took the power during 25 years. And maybe in one month, these guys are gonna be thrown out because the Apira lady, that today is the, the opposition candidate, this lady has more than 20 years around. Nobody took care of her because they, they saw her like a, like a right-handed extremist lady. But now everybody knew that, the, that she was the, the real candidate and she has created a, a momentum as a opposition that I've never seen. So, so now the possibility of a real change in Venezuela is 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 in less than one month. So that's mm -hmm. why I want my book to get cut in the middle of the situation yeah. because great, well, that's quite wise. You want to be beyond that, yeah. Sorry, noise. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that somebody can pick the English version and say, "Hey, hey, see what this guy is saying there." I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it can mm -hmm. it can happen. But I didn't want that to create that noise because that's not my intention of my book. Somebody told me, no, but it's good that you create that noise. No, no, no. I don't want to create that my noise because my real intention of my book, of course, that, that my story is told, but I have two real intentions. One is raise awareness of this hostage situation that is going in the world that is terrible. And I was mm. a big, and the second is, is uh, leave the legacy that's more important for me for the future that the people can really realize that if we have, if I went through that situation and I could survive it in the life, you can survive anything in the life. So this and is it, my real message behind this. That that the big because at the end, when you get to the end of the book, you're gonna read the, the last chapter that is not my reflections. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the reflections, you will see what is my thinking of what is my 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 takeaway, my my lesson learned through all this case, because as I said, I took the time because I could have published that book one year ago, but I decided really consciously to take me the time, the first to put my words out, a uh, uh, big, mm, mm, well-known, uh, and as you said, I, I'm being all over the place because I have been putting my message, my message. Hmm. But uh, at the same time, I wanted to be more reflective the, and, and to understand all the process and how, for me, that has been like a personal growth. And, and I always say that I'm not glad what happened to me, but I'm really glad the lessons that I learned after what happened to me. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so. I, would you say that you had, well, we don't want to diminish the, 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 the trauma that you went through, but you had two growth sort of cycles one going through the experience and then maybe one reflecting back whilst you were writing your memoir yes 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 yeah definitely yes because i i i have my therapist that i i talk every thursday with her so i have already almost since i came back almost two years talking with her well one mm. year and maybe and 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 she and with by the way we are very friends today and she tells me that the way i decided to face this and begin to talk and, and begin to reflect 
and, 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 and verbalize having really, not only helping me in my healing process, help me really understand how this really can help others. Because mm -hmm. I went to a situation that can be one of the worst situations that anybody can have in their life after, before. the worst is, is die, of course, but the second is losing the freedom. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, uh, uh, how, how terrible can be something that losing your freedom and the way we lose the freedom because you can lose the freedom because you commit a crime or, or, or you do something wrong, but we were taken because these evil people wanted to use it. So mm. we, we, it was like a human trafficking, what they did to us. It was a mm. crime against the humanity. They took us knowing that we were innocent and they, they put a false charge, sham trial. But this is not only Venezuela, all this country does it. Yesterday began the, the trial of a, 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 a New York journalist that is kept in Russia. His name is Ivan Gershevik. He came yesterday. It's, it's a sham trial. They're going to condemn him. They're going to put him 20 years, something like that, because the intention of these guys is to do the trial, condemn you, and then negotiate you. So mm. they said, now, and right, they use you as a pawn. Yeah. And, that's, that's what this guy do. do. All these countries, uh, China, Russia, Iran, Afghanistan, Syria, Myanmar, Venezuela, Cuba, all, all these, uh, uh, North, North Korea, all this evil club, the, what they do is a copy paste. So that's why for me, and, and this is something really serious, it's called the hostage diplomacy because it's a very sophisticated way to do diplomacy because mm -hmm. now they that they can find I don't know if you 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 saw yesterday was the, the, the debate between Trump and Biden and one of the conversation was exactly the whole situation I remember that Trump was blaming Biden that he has been soft with his government well maybe that, that's a position but let me tell you this is something very serious because you get caught in the middle of the, the fight between two countries so so you the only way you can get released is that they get an agreement and sometimes the agreement takes difficult decisions and the government mm -hmm. has to solve the decision and, 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 and to bring the people back. So there's a decision or or or, the, or you get left behind or they or they agree in something, but they use you as a pawn. Mm -hmm. You become a pawn. That's what happened to us. Yeah, and that's terrifying really, isn't it? I mean, I see it's a parallel that I hope you, you won't mind me doing, but I see during election time as part of the population in the UK has been used as the pawn. Usually it's immigrants. <laughs> Every single election, the immigration debate gets, gets raised. It's within the same country. We're not talking about diplomacy, but it is just as upsetting. Or it well, could be a small population, part of the population that is, you know, vilified and, and used as, as in, on a, in a ping pong game. And that is always upsetting. It's awful. There is a famous case in, 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 in UK, a lady called Nazanin Sagari Ratcliffe. Uh, and, and she was like five years uh, hosted in Iran. And she came back like I, I, before me, maybe two years ago. And I believe she's suing the government. I believe, I'm not sure. Because she she, she has talked that, that, that she was caught because of the situation between, because she, she was caught and they were asking to, uh, 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 to the UK to pay a, a very old debt before the Iranian revolution, something like that. It was some, something crazy. So that lady stayed like five years until they get uh, the, the negotiation because you get caught in, in situations that you cannot control. In our case, they Venezuela begin to ask for us, they get sanction relief to the country. Then they begin to ask sanction relief to the people that they, 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 they were, were, were sanctioned. Then they, they begin to ask to get lifted the oil ban, the oil ban. Mm. The, the, and, and the negotiation went back and forth, back and forth, and then they begin to ask to get us swapped by a very famous drug lord called Alessad. So all these four things didn't happen, but it takes five years to 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 uh, this mm. negotiation. And at the end, we came in with, uh, uh, through the sixth option that we were negotiated by the two nephews of the president of Venezuela. So we went through six negotiations. That's why these cases sometimes you stay for years. Because it mm. takes, there has to be 
but the high politics, and, and by the way, in the US, you have to get agreement between between the two uh, parties. So it's like in UK, you have to have bipartisan agreement to because you have to sign documents, you know. Mm. Oof. So talk about talk to us about the process of writing that memoir. Um, you mentioned earlier that you had the letters translated, or did you translate them yourself? Did that take you back? Did you need extra support from your therapist? How how was the process for you? Well, thank you for asking because I maybe have never talk about the process, yeah, how it went. To your audience, they maybe didn't hear my first uh, interview uh, or 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 or, or the, some I have been doing. The way I wrote my book is based on the letters that during three years I could smuggle with my wife. How I did it? Because the first year of my captivity, we were I separated the six. We were solitary, each in all different places. And that year was terrible for us because we, we were lack of food and medicine. And we were having a lot of illness because already there were playing sanctions to the country and then the economy was scrambled. So um, we were going in a very bad situation and then it came a commission of the UN and they, they began to pressure because by that time the, the, the US ambassador also was recalled. So our situation escalated so high that they recalled the US ambassador. Until today, there is no US ambassador in Venezuela. Can you imagine that? So, so um, uh, after that year that the UN intervened, they begin to relax a little bit our situation. So they decided to put the six together and they begin to allow us to have uh, food provided by our families and books and medicine, etc. Because if not, it would, maybe we would have died. And my family decided to begin to provide me food. It was a very sophisticated logistic because me, my wife began to send me food from the U.S. to Venezuela, but that was not working because the sanctions was really difficult to put the food in Venezuela. So so my eldest son moved to Colombia. He moved to Bogota, and from Bogota, he began to supply food to Venezuela. was easy because it's in the border. And he stayed when, during five years, uh, four years. Uh, so what, four wow. years doing that? So every yeah. week, every week he did a grocery. He sent it in a box to Venezuela. And uh, somebody in Venezuela pick up the box and, and the wife of that guy cooked me and then sent me the food every every two days. So imagine wow. that logic. Yeah. During years. During very years. creative. I mean, I'm, I don't mean to dismiss the process, but very creative. Yes. It worked. I, I stayed during four years receiving food that way and medicine. And let me tell you, never, never, they, they left me behind. Every two days was the food coming to me. Mm. So, so when I did, I, every two days I had to return the food. I had to return the trash cans to to the guy to to wash it and bring new food because there was no cans. But the country mm. didn't have nothing, so we they he had to recycle the cans. So in those cans, I did a double bottom and it began to smuggle letters in, in the bottom. I see. Mm. That's the way I did. So those letters, when I came back in October 2022, I found, because the guy, he, well, he did, he took a photo, he sent it via WhatsApp to my wife, my wife received it, she printed, she read it, and she answered to me and sent it the, the, the answer. So two days after, I received the answer of her. And we did like a secret code in the case that letter could be discovered. For some reason, they never discovered them. So, so I already compiled it, like, around 1,000 letters. And when, when I came back, not only my wife has compiled them, she put it in Word. So already the, the letters were in Word. So kind of the real editor of my letter was my wife because she she had already had taken the time that put it in Word and, and formatted. And so, as I said, if I would really wanted to publish the book one month after, I could maybe have done it. But I, but I said, nobody knows me. So who, who I'm gonna publish a book that nobody's gonna read because nobody knows me. So I said, let me, let me begin to talk, to say who am I, what I went through, and why I want to begin to talk about this, this terrible situation. And that's why I decided to do that. And I created, I believe, my own brand today. And they say, okay, now is the moment that I'm gonna publish a book. 
And for me, it was great because I, I could reflect. So when I went back, when I decided like three months ago that seriously, to now I'm going to publish, I, I, I decided to go to the selection of the publisher, et cetera, et cetera. It came like 40 publishers uh, to me. And so I choose one. Uh, uh, and when I begin to work with this guy, I begin to re review what, what was going to be my final manuscript. I begin to find a lot of gaps. Because one of the things, because the memory is, is terrible, because I didn't recall that the year after, the, the year before, sorry, that I came, that last year, already the negotiation with the U.S. government were in place. They were going back and forward to Venezuela. So they really relaxed the last year, our situation, and we begin to receive more phone calls. So I stopped writing letters. That last year, I didn't write letters. I was always talking. And that's why I had a gap. And I had a gap of the event that happened after I came. So I had to revisit my book and incorporate mm. gap. So that's why it took me like three months to go back to mm. to event I had more information because now my wife because I had my story in my head but I didn't have some part of the story because my wife and my eldest son had more information that I didn't have because our case as I said begin to go so political that uh, we were six guys six families so the US government talked with the six families they were having direct conversation there was mm. routine conversation my, my wife was went two times to the white house and she was every month going to the state department or they were coming to to here to houston so one day they, they said okay we need a focal point for family to have a director and, and, and my eldest son the one that was in bogota he was a, designated by my family as focal point so he began to have direct conversation with the government even even any conversation they have meetings and they they he come they came so he began to be the, my focal point so my son had a lot of information that I didn't have mm -hmm. so I, I I needed to incorporate all those events of course mm -hmm. that, that and... you would my book you will read things in my book that I say there because I know because my family told them to me. Mm -hmm. wow and um can I ask you Jose what was the personal benefit of you writing your memoir? What do you think you've gained from doing that? Well, there are several. One of them is telling the story, the, the really, what, what's the real story? Because as I, as I say, maybe not today, but in the future, the story is gonna be told in the Venezuela. You know, it's gonna be part of the story of Venezuela. We became the, the, the guys that, because our situation eh, 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 put after years, with our ambassador and no direct conversation, the U.S. decided to talk with the, U the Venezuelan government because of our case. So we, we really, we, we, we re literally reopened the relation between the two countries. It not You never thought that that could happen, but that was what really happened. Mm. And, wow. and so I wanted to put that, you know, rec record straight at what happened. That's the first thing. Second, that I want to really raise awareness that these things that are happening in the world that people doesn't know. And third, my legacy that that ha had that message to the people that even we went to a terrible situation because I I narrate there terrible events. When you go to the, the the second part of the book, you will see terrible events there. So be prepared. Be prepared mm -hmm. where, where you You want to so give a, a trigger warning to people. When they read the book, yeah, I can tell you. My wife always said that the people that read that it doesn't cry are not human beings. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Oh that, dear, yeah, no." It's... He, he has read that several times and always finished crying when she read that 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 that, that those chapter. After the chapter eleven, is a roller coaster that comes, mm. a real. Roller I'll have to prepare myself a bit. <laughs> um, thanks for the warning. Um, so I've seen you interviewed and speaking at conferences relentlessly in the past nine months, how, or even a year now. It's going to be a year in September. How do you make sure that you don't burn out, per se? Because you've already been through the ringer, haven't you? Um, you know, uh, for me, it has been like a calling, to tell you the truth. Okay. I really... 
feel a calling that I needed to put this message out because as I said, I, I really needed to, to raise awareness. And I, I believe that today, I'm that by the way, today I'm very connected with all these foundations that work in, in, in this area. One of the foundations in July is, is going to appear my article. When it appears, I'm going to uh, share with you where they ask me, how is my life after I came? And, and how mm -hmm. is the life of my family? So I did like a reflection about that because this has been really, really terrible. That the reinsertion, the reintegration is difficult. Yeah, it, I can imagine because it's, you know, everybody likes a, a happy ending, but actually coming home wasn't the happy ending. There were never, more problems uh, facing you when you came back. And then, um, let me tell you something else. That now that I'm connected with the hostage community, I know many cases of other hostages all all of them are going through the same situation i'm not unique i'm not, maybe at a different level but all go through situation it can be emotional physical mental or financial or maybe the four or maybe mm. the four because you, things are like stupid like uh you have a credit card that your family didn't know that you had because you you handled it by your own and now you have a debt of five years unpaid with a monstrous debt or you have irs issues so things like that simple like that mm. that come I mean, you find a, a a financial nightmare that you you didn't create it it was part of the problem mm. wow no i can i can only imagine and i i seem to remember from our interview last september that you said that there was a crucial moment for you in that time when you were captive when you were given a specific book um, oh yeah so would you like to share what the book was? Because you're talking about a calling and I think this book uh, helps people find meaning in life, no matter what happens. Well, um, let me tell you, today, today I'm very, I, I, for some reason in life, there is a lot of parallelism with what happened to me uh, or, or, or uh, uh, six guys. But, but I'm talking my, about me, how I felt. I see a lot of parallelism respecting the, the, the importance of the character of the book. But when 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 I begin to have the opportunity to read books, I remember because that book came to me through a general. With me was a general, a high ranked general that has been a defense minister of Venezuela. He was in jail because he became a position of the government and he, he they took him as a political prisoner. So he was my neighbor of Sam. And that guy, because he was a very high ranked general, three star general, this guy, they treat him like, uh, had like a respect because he was a high, high ranked general. So yeah. he always read books. And one day, and he always received piles of books. And one day he, he comes to me and said, Hey, Jose, I read this book. It's awesome. Read it. You, you, you're going to feel it. That's really interesting. When I got the book, was a book called Men in, the, Men in the Search of a Meaning of Victor Franco. Yeah. I never read the book. First time I heard about that book. Never, never. I Today I'm aware that it's one of the most empire books in the world. But for me, it was the first time I read it. I haven't read so, it myself. So it's interesting. Yeah. When I begin to read that book, uh, Angie, I, I, I got so, so, so impressed because things that I was living in that moment, I read it there. And I mm. said, wow, in a concentration camp. So this guy were applying nasty techniques to us. Things that they, they, this guy narrated in his book, they were doing to us the same. So they were mm. applying nasty techniques to us. So we were literally in a concentration camp. So that's why for me it was so impactful, the book, because this guy, one of the things that he he wrote, and that's why his book became so famous, is because he talked to inspire people for generations to come. That, no, that when you find, when you find purpose, your purpose, and, and even and he said that even in the suffering you can find the purpose. He found his purpose, and he wrote his book. So I I said, hey, this guy is talking to me, and that was one one of the reasons why I decided to write my book. Mm. I find it wonderful that we can be inspired by other authors 
um, to share our own story and how that can, you know, because even though I'm not, I don't know if the message is similar to, to Frankel's book, but we need to hear these stories in many different flavors, in many different characters, with many different voices, because everybody's touched by a different story, if that makes any sense. So I'm wondering to a certain extent where your story is not going to speak a lot to all these executives, maybe um, who are, um, you know, at CEO level like you were or CFO or whatever, and who might not go through the same situation as you, but who need the inspiration and and who best to get it from than one of their peers, you know? And, and, and I can tell you that you can be in a most wonderful position in life like I was. I was... Sorry, I was in the pinnacle of my career when this happened to me. So I was in the uh, in, in a stage that everybody could wanted to be, but was in the worst moment going the political tension. So I I I I consciously said I I don't like what is going. I'm gonna get retired. But you can be a CEO of a company. You never know when things bad come mm -hmm. because you never announce. So you can be the, the, the you know, the, I, I see the people that are successful, good for them. But you have to take consideration that you never know when things bad can come to you. How you're going to react? How, how What is going to be your, your reaction to that? Are you going to be depressed or are you going to success? So, so that's my message. And not only to a CEO. Because you can be to any adversity in life. Name anything in your life that you're facing today. So how you want to be seen in the future, like a guy that, that, that failed and, and got depressed and, 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 and never made it, or you want to be a guy that say, okay, I went to this, but now I'm here. Because the, the lessons is that you, you have your own purpose. Because... Again, I'm a God believer, but that God has a master plan for you or, or, or whatever entity you believe, there's always a master plan for you. But sometimes you have to go through a lot of situations in life. How, how you want to go to point A to point B? Or or you want to get stuck in the middle or you really want to go there? So that, that, that is part of the reflection that I have in my book. Mm. No, I find it fascinating. And, and thank you so much for sharing this with us. I have two more questions I want to ask you before we finish this interview, because I don't want it to go over the hour. And we could talk for hours, Jose, couldn't we? <laughs> but um, so I, I have... I, I, go ahead. Get bored. I will never get bored telling my story because always there are things that are tweaks in the story, the things that... Our story has so much things. I, I, before we, we finish, and let me say something before I forget, because I'm w working with a Canadian producer, like he wants to put my story out, and we're working in, in a, a, a first thing, a short anthology, and he's thinking to pitch a docu series. So we were talking. That would ago. be amazing. Yeah, and that would be amazing. Gonna, I'm going to say it here for the first time. I'm having these conversations. Uh, it, it's it, it's going to be first a short film as an anthology. As part of a, a, a set of anthologies, and then they're gonna think to pitch that the whole docu series yeah. of wow. uh, or maybe the movie, I don't know. But he was telling with the other guys, uh, and he was saying, Jose's story has so much that you can have, I don't know, 10 chapters in a docu series because our story, when you go to, to the final chapter or, or, or a book, has so much roller coasters. That you say, hey man, how these guys made it? We went through the crazy, crazy things there. The most crazy thing that you can imagine happened to us. Mm -hmm. You were really. Hmm. So, I'm wondering, and and I hope I don't offend you by asking you this question. I'm wondering if God has a sense of humor. Because a month before you were taken hostage, you actually invited to your annual conference a man who went through something very similar to you, maybe for a shorter period of time. I haven't watched the film, so I don't know the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Captain Phillips, uh, who was yep. featured in a film um, and, and actually acted by Tom Hanks, came to right. do an inspirational talk to your people, 500 people. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that that's totally true. No, no, that, that was not God playing joke. I believe that 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 guy for me was an angel, because okay. what he that day prepared me for the event of what's going to happen one month after. Because that guy that day when 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 he finishes his speech, by the way, he was a hostage by the Somali pirates. In yeah. he was the a big uh, tanker, oil tanker. And he was coming from Somalia when he was captured. I don't remember how long he stayed, but but the story uh, that he told me that day that the movie was only the half of the situation that happened to him. Yeah. So he was at war. I don't have the details. I don't have the details, but but what's our journey? I saw the movie. The movie was cried of wow, the why these guys going. So I told him, man, what a journey. But he told me that um, the, the human being has that inner force that you can. Uh, unleash it. You what you need is to tap it because you're connected to God. He's a God believer too. So when that guy told me, it really cut. Wow, that I was driving back to my home and say, "Wow, what a message!" And I kept thinking on that. One month after happened my situation, and that day yeah. that we were in handcuffed in an armored truck going to the military basement, we were put. I was thinking in that guy. Really, really, that for me, that guy was kind of an angel. And the other thing that 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 I can say here, because I'm saying I'm today a guy connected to my church. One of the things the other day my pastor was talking, it's something that here the reflection that when he when something is going to you, you can have intersections or intervention. Okay. Inter when 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 something is gonna happen and God intercepts you, He takes you out. An intervention is when already the situation happened, He takes you out. When there is an intervention, is is because you're in the in the hole already. He takes you from the hole. When that happens, always is a loss. In the first thing, there is not a loss because it happened before the situation happened. That was our case. I was okay. going to situation terrible because the situation the political situation between the US and Venezuela was affecting me I was having a, a high blood pressure I was suffering yeah. overwhelm drinking a lot I was having a, 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 a super stress I I was literally, your sleep also was very bad wasn't it I, I, tell, I, yeah I was literally going to collapse. So if this situation didn't happen to me, maybe I die. And for some reason, I went to this situation and I begin to uh, I starve. I lost 100 pounds. Now, now they begin to bring me food. And the person that began to cook me, she, she began to cook me very, very healthy. And I stayed uh, eating healthy during years. Today, I don't have problem with the blood pressure. The problem that I have with the diabetes is gone, and and, and the problem that I have with the thyroid is gone. Magic, it was it mm. is gone. I go today to my uh, my 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 work uh, 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 blood work and all this stuff. Everything is okay. okay. So you mm. know <laughs> things that happen. No, I like how you you uh, you framed it as a as someone like like a human angel coming to you <laughs> to give you what you needed to take you to the next step, which is probably when this general gave you that book, um, almost like a relay, you know, here, I'm gonna give you this and I'm gonna give you this. And I'm, it's, and you're gonna be that person as well, that human angel for someone else as well, I'm sure. The other day, I, I, I did, when I did my, my virtual uh, book launching party, I did a LinkedIn audio room and I invite, by the way, I, I believe I invited you, but maybe you, so uh, I begin to invite all the people that have been part of my journey during this time. And it show up a lot of people that had time without hearing them, people that have been connecting, because for me, there has been a great connection, the, how much people have been knowing all over. So there is a guy that, that today I'm connecting. He lives in Germany. He lives in Germany. And that day, because like two days before I, I had the luncheon party, I'm today part of a group that we meet here in Houston every every three, the third Saturday before the month end, we have a, a meeting. And we are 
people over 60 years, I today 62, people over 62, senior citizens that, that, that do uh, life in, in our church. So it's a group that belongs to the church and it's called the Golden Heart. It's a wonderful group because we go, oh, we have fun, they, they do prizes, the people joke. It's a, a lot of congregate people, but maybe there are people are over 70, 80 years and they, you know, it, it's, it becomes really warm, very friendly. Well, one of the ladies that was part of that group, that she was like a, the soul of the group. She was always sing, singing and his uh, her wife was the, the, the guitar player. They were always joking, joking and laughing and, you know, having fun. That day, the day of the, of, of, of the event, she began to feel bad and, and she, they went to the ER and she passed. She passed. She passed less than one week ago. And 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 when we knew that she she had passed, everybody was like in shock. And I was thinking, wow, how how is life? You have to live your life. So in that event, I talked about her case, and I said, whoever is hearing this in this moment, if you're having problem with the people in your life, take the phone and say that you love them, and mm. forgive them. And you know, that guy called me, the guy that my friend from Germany, he called me. And he told me that he was walking his dog in this moment, hearing my program. And he and he had finished uh, his relation with her, his fiance. And he told me, you know what I did after I heard you? I called her and, and now we're back together. So literally I saved a soul that day. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, know, you that's never, lovely. Yeah. You mm. never know. I hear your message. Mm. Well, Jose, it's been such a delight to talk to you again. Thank you so much for accepting to come on um, on my page. Um, and it's going to be published, as we discussed, probably on, on YouTube as well. So um, I would like to know how people can find you, how they can find your book, and, and generally, um, you know, um, how they can follow your story, because I'm sure it's not going to be the end of it. Um, especially if you're having filmmakers interested in, and I'm not surprised. It's such a big story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 we're beginning that the, the, maybe the, what's going to come first is going to be the anthology. And I'm going to say here very shortly, what we're working is, a, is anthology is four stories that are apparently in, in not connected, but there is a connector of the four okay. story. Story is one of the four stories. So that this anthology is going to be four shorts that uh, together are going to be a, a whole film. And okay. they're planning this, this for the next year to the Cannes Festival. So that, that's Ooh. the goal. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's, the that's exciting. Goal. Mm. It's a goal because this guy, the, the main producer is a guy that is a former Hollywood producer, but he's very connected with the Cannes people. He, he was mm -hmm. a, a a jury in, in, in Cannes this year. So, so that's the main goal that we're working now. But at the same time, the director of the, my, my story of the four is the same guy that's working with me uh, at pitching our, our, our story as a docu series to the mainstreaming. And he's planning, if, if we are successful, to do a six chapter uh, 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 docu series. And in the future, I don't know if that is going to become a movie. That that will be the next step. You, but that's what we're working today in, in, in that area, okay? But uh, if you want to find me, the most easy way is going to my webpage. My webpage is very easy, Jose Connect, all together, joseconnect.com. When you go to my webpage, the first thing that will appear is all the links to the place there is my book because that's why I'm promoting today. So you will find there the link, link to Amazon, to Barnes and Noble, to Lulu, okay. to digital, to to uh to like six or seven links all over the place where you can find it in Kindle, in ebook, in Amazon, in Barnes and Noble, etc. In that in the same page you can find my coaching program that I have have my speaking program and, and I have a lot of videos there that can people see me because I today speaking in Spanish and in English in, in both. And uh, I have several speaking gigs uh, uh, there. 
I have me my podcast. By the way, your podcast is there. I have it there in, in my workplace. Oh, that's it, lovely. Mm, it, thank you. In your podcast, I, that the one that I did with you because it was a really lovely podcast. I have my, my, my interviews that have been done in TV, etc. Articles because now I'm invited to write articles and uh, and I'm very active in LinkedIn and Facebook. But more in LinkedIn, I have my own newsletter that you can find it also there also there and well everything is there it, it, the i'll share all the links I i'll share all the links on my page but also on youtube so people can find you and um, i'm really sorry i didn't attend your launch party um i don't know what went wrong here but i'm so glad we're catching up today and that you you know you were kind enough to give me over an hour of your time to um to talk about this um, I'm I'm very touched for saying I really appreciate this, and Thank I'm sure you. my listener will too as well. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording for now. Uh, I'm going to thank people for watching this video. Um,